Hey, how you doing? I'm Van. Welcome back to the only channel on YouTube that remembers Captain Planet. Nobody else does, that's for sure. Welcome! Welcome to the finale of Captain Planet. More specifically, the worst episodes of Captain Planet, as rated by IMDb. This has been a long, long journey. There have been six of these after this one, and I am tired. I'm tired of Captain Planet. It's even worse right now because I just recorded this entire video, like, was done with it, and then I realized Audacity wasn't recording any of the audio, so I had to start over. But if you've somehow made it to this episode without seeing any of the other five, go watch them. They're all insane and they're all awful. It's a lot of fun. But I'm gonna jump straight into the episode now because I'm ready to be done with this. I'm ready for Captain Planet to end. Please subscribe. Before the episode even begins, by the way, we gotta talk about this. Captain Planet, he's the man, leading the Chargers' number one fan. Yeah, he can use a better rumor. Some people say he's got a bad sense of humor. The opening narration has been completely replaced with whatever kind of theme song you want to call this, with the alien mouth from, uh... You Bet Your Planet. Singing, for some reason? I don't know if that mouth ever came back either. I think they're just reusing the assets from that episode. I would so much rather have the opening narration. That was just boring. This is atrocious. You don't, you just coming in here for a second? I kept on hearing your voice repeating. Yeah, because I kept messing up saying certain things and trying again. Because you gotta, whenever I edit, I, I take out the ones that I do bad on and put in the ones that I say I do good on. Now, the episode Who Gives a Hoot is considered one of the worst episodes in all of Captain Planet's history, being the reason a lot of fans apparently quit watching the show entirely and gave up on it completely. That's exactly the reason we're not covering it today. A lot of people have already talked about this episode, uh, a lot for Captain Planet at least, like there's a few if you look about it online, but they're better with their words than I am. I'm just doing this because I want attention. So I decided instead to cover another episode that was just as bad, but didn't receive quite as much hate, and that episode is Frog Day Afternoon. So in our first scene, we're introduced to the villains of this episode, Dr. Blight and Mal, who are in a ship just hanging out for some reason, doing a medical exam on Dr. Blight. Now, whatever's wrong with her is wrong with her head. You're in perfect health. From the neck down, that is. But they're scanning the rest of her body anyway for some reason. Don't really know what that's about. I think Mal's just screwing with her because, uh, as we find out later, he's not really on her side. But Mal informs Dr. Blight that her scar that she keeps covered by her hair has begun to spread. And within a year, it will cover her entire body, making her a monster of living scab tissue and scarification. Kumo. No ma'am. She, of course, freaks out about this and starts assaulting Mal, who cares despite being a digitized consciousness within a computer, but whatever. And he comes up with a harebrained idea, harebrained even by his estimation, to essentially combine Dr. Blight's DNA with frogs, which will cause it to regenerate her scar tissue. Many amphibians can regrow lost limbs by repairing their genetic material, or DNA. Apply this phenomenon to your DNA structure, and theoretically... Will it work? It could, but it probably won't. That doesn't sound like a very good plan. Dr. Blight loves it, though. Like, jumps on board immediately and starts taking whole islands with ecosystems containing frogs so she can keep them in a little frog prison. She could just build a terrarium. But instead, she takes islands. Which is, of course, why she gets caught. A square sunblock or you will barbecue your skin. Don't worry, your pretty little moisturized. We arrive on Gaia's island where the Planeteers are having a fun game of beach volleyball. Wheeler, being Wheeler, isn't wearing sunscreen. What a card. What a, what a silly little goober he's being. And definitely not Gaia shows up to tell them of the frog habitats that are disappearing. Exactly. And in recent years, amphibians around the world have been dying off. Oh, some boy. I say definitely not Gaia, because Gaia's voice actor was completely replaced at the end of season 3. They lost Whoopi Goldberg and instead replaced her with Margot Kidder. I haven't heard her voice at all come out of Gaia's mouth until season 6, so I think they just finally wrote Gaia back into the show in season 6, or this is just a doppelganger that the Planeteers have created to hide the fact that Whoopi Goldberg guy is still dead in the flower bed. But the Planeteers, being the Planeteers, hear about these frog environments disappearing, and they decide to jump on it right after they lay out some quick frog facts. Frogs have existed on Earth for some 350 million years! It's here that we begin to notice that the other Planeteers have completely stopped being characters, but I'll complain about that more later. Um, because we cut to this crap. Starting to get on my nerves! Oh, what's a little croaking to save face? Just whipping up a regenerating froggy frappe? Ah. Dr. Blight, knowing that she needs the frog DNA to be 
scientifically injected into her, essentially, has taken it upon herself to begin blending the frogs and drinking it. I'm not kidding. They never show her actually putting the frogs in the blender, but there is a blender nearby, and there are a lot of frogs and their little frog prisons nearby as well. And this sludge is just called frog. And she really likes it, too. Like, she doesn't like it in the first gulp. But after that, she really comes around and starts slathering her face with it. Like, the Hanna-Barbera animators are, are weird, you know? Like, we know that already, but... I always forget exactly how weird. It's not really surprising that, like, Seth MacFarlane was, like, a writer for Hanna-Barbera, you know? The humor is very in line with him. <sighs> the planeteers arrive in a seemingly random forest, uh, just guys, kind of taking so measurements fine. and readings and looking at frogs I here. I, I'm giving them the benefit of the doubt and saying that based on the map that definitely not Gaia showed them earlier, they've picked the spot most likely to be attacked. Because it's then immediately attacked and the whole area is lifted up. And Linka, like, fucking bails, dude. Like, she gets out of there. She is gone. Leaves Wheeler to die, which is great because he does. What the? Oh! <laughs> he doesn't really. He, d he doesn't die, of course. He just gets whacked in the back of the head and is kidnapped. But, you know, I mean, it's still not good. So Mal and Dr. Blight discover that they have Wheeler tucked away in the cargo hold with the rest of the frogs, and they begin to torture. It's at this point that I have the biggest problem with the entire episode. Well, one of the biggest problems. My biggest problem, plot-wise. Dr. Blight has revealed that she is working on the Planeteer Genome Project, where she plans to alter the Planeteer's DNA with that of her scab in order to turn them into walking, living scabs. Which will affect their ability to fight crime, I guess. I don't really know. They, I just, It seems like she's doing all right. My problem with this is, of course, the fact that she didn't know what DNA was at the beginning of the episode when Mal had to explain it to her. Deoxyribonucleic acid to you. Now suddenly she's got this fucking Planeteer Genome Project. I ain't buying it. I'm not. I'm not on board with the Dr. Blight boat. It doesn't make any sense. She shouldn't be able to do this. And yes, I'm trying to apply logic to Captain Planet, and I realize that I'm the idiot for that, but... I want it to make sense. During their flight, they hit some turbulence, which causes her evil concoction that she's making to be swapped. So it's very confusing and very stupid. I think I, I think I say that at least once an episode, don't I? Now, deposit the last load of land and then head to Cave Central. Our planet polywogs will be arriving soon. Hey, come on! You're I feel like I do. I at, least, I at least call it stupid once an episode, because it is. Arriving on the island, the Planeteers find Wheeler bound and gagged, staked to the island, which shocks them, but not as much as being shot the fuck down. <laughs> They're totally fine, by the way. Like, they get out just fine, and Mati tells his little monkey friend whose name that, uh, I don't know, it's the monkey. Suchi, stay in the Geocruiser! But Mati tells his monkey friend to stay inside of their little thing that got shot down, because it will likely be safer. I only bring that up because it comes up later. Trust me, it's necessary. The Planeteers manage to save Wheeler and run, being shot by Dr. Blight with a couple of the darts. But the non-main character Planeteers are perfectly fine. They all got blocked by their accessory. Ah, oh, the dart just nicked my armband! Lunch! Oh, saved by the belt! You know, by, by our toys. But Linka was also hit by the serum. Leading to my next big problem, plot related with this episode. Both Wheeler and Linka are hit with this dart, which has this strange serum that causes them to go unconscious. The other planeteers leave Linka and Wheeler like 20 feet away from the campfire on the ground and then go to sleep. They don't watch them, they don't monitor them, they don't care what happens to them. They're like, oh, I'm tired. <laughs> And then when they wake up in the middle of the night, they find Wheeler and Linka's clothes empty, completely without them inside of it. And they just leave again! They don't investigate the area, they don't look to see if their rings are there, they don't call out, they just turn around and leave. And they don't come back until the plot needs them. They don't do anything other than summon Captain Planet. I don't think any of the other ones actually use their rings of power in this episode. It's a little odd to me that as soon as the Hanna-Barbera writers took over, only the white characters really started being the main characters. Like, the minorities fell off. Probably says something about Hanna-Barbera, but I, I don't know what. Wouldn't begin to know. So yes, Wheeler and Linka have become tiny because of the serum from Dr. Blight. Uh, in becoming tiny, Wheeler becomes a big old fucking creep towards Linka and starts trying to take advantage of her at kind of every opportunity, or at least implying that he wants to. Not Linka too! Dr. Demented really did it this time! Should I? <laughs> 
I don't know if this is a new personality trait of Wheeler's that exists in the rest of the season, but I don't like it here. It's gross. It's creepy. And if this is how Wheeler is everywhere, I, I just, I, I want to fight him. The other Planeteers, by the way, I literally mean the other Planeteers aren't in the rest of this episode until the plot needs them. There's a solid seven minutes just following Linka and Wheeler. So they have their little tiny adventure, which I'm honestly kind of a big fan of. I like seeing things from different perspectives and seeing everyday things like grass or ants or frogs or spiders from the perspective of those creatures really gives you a sense of scale that you don't find elsewhere. Everything, whenever the characters are small, is meant to look bigger, so it looks bigger, you know? Like, something about this grass and something about these animals feels larger than anything else that they run across when they're normal-sized. Though that may have something to do with the fact that they're not normally this size, so these things are way bigger than I anticipate them being. Lincoln and Wheeler are chased by ants, they are caught by a spider, and then once they escape that, they get into a little polluted river and go down it for a little ways, and somehow that gets them to a desert. They're of course immediately attacked by a gila monster because they can't catch a break where they're chased into a cave, and a pair of hairy little legs comes to their rescue. It's the monkey from earlier. I told you it would come back. But he rescues the two planeteers and uh, takes them straight to the other ones. Like, he just teleports there, and we're suddenly with the other planeteers in Dr. Blight's lab. Because these three have just arrived here. They, they got here all on their own, without any problems and no difficulty. The monkey then immediately arrives with Wheeler and Linka, like, right behind them. Wame then picks up Wheeler like kind of a jerk. Like, why did he do that? Why, like, pick him up like a person. And then Dr. Blight just apparates and appears inside of her lab and snatches Wheeler, and a whole lot of stuff begins to happen. To your face! Is my scar spreading? Mal! Oh. oh, that's a rude awakening. Let our powers combine. They managed to summon Captain Planet instead of using their actual rings that they all have. Uh, still don't really understand that, but whatever. And Cap saves the day like always. And by that I mean he tells them to leave Wheeler to die. I'd better leap into action before she turns the planet tears into froggy tears. Planet toad into planet puree. We better abandon ship, Planeteers. Probably the best idea in this scenario, considering Dr. Blight was threatening to drop Wheeler into a blender and kill him. It's still really funny just to watch Captain Planet look at the situation and go, Nah. Also, despite the fact that Dr. Blight's only bargaining chip in this situation was the fact that Wheeler was in mortal peril, she doesn't just lock him in the blender. She throws him into a terrarium. Captain Planet is contractually obligated to be gooped in every episode. <laughs> And then the frogs take over the controls. They're taking over the controls! It's the day of the fence! And immediately stops Dr. Blight and saves Wheeler, like he could have done from the beginning. Sometimes I can be a real sucker! It's just another frog day afternoon. And the episode wraps up. We go back to the Planeteer still playing volleyball, with Linka being still tiny and Wheeler still being a creep. For now, babe, I got you in the palm of my hand. Wheeler! <laughs> <laughs> My toga! Definitely not Gaia says something about what lesson they learned today, and Dr. Blight is being forced to put back all of the frogs where they belong. With Captain Planet's help, of course. You know how I mentioned that Mal was kind of a dick, by the way, and not really on her side? Uh, it's at this point we find out that her scar was actually already healing on its own. It was already not going to cover her entire body and turn it into a scab. Mal probably lied on purpose, though he says he didn't. And uh, now that she's done the frog stuff, now it's going to turn into a giant scab and ruin her entire body. Ah! Go planet! The planeteer alerts for this episode aren't bad either, one being about the dangers of UV radiation, which is something they did lightly touch upon a couple of times in the episode, and the other being about cleaning up your trash, which, you know, they saved this stupid-ass frog earlier, so I guess... There is some kind of connection. But then they mention the radiator fluid and the dogs again. And they just did that last episode. So, like, was there was there an epidemic of people giving radiator fluid to dogs? I don't think people did that. I don't think it was as big of a deal as Captain Planet is saying that it is. And this is just educating more terrible people on how to further hurt dogs. So maybe, maybe quit it. And that's it. We are done with Captain Planet. That was Frog Day afternoon, and I could not be happier that it is over. Let me check something. Okay, Audacity's still going strong. Had to make sure I was I was gonna have a stroke. But thank you everybody who watched this series, or just watching this episode, tuning into the shorts, or subscribing. Thank everybody so much. Um, I, I'm, I'm at a thousand now. I'm over a thousand. I'm, at, I'm almost at a thousand and fifty. And I... I'm baffled. It's crazy. I need a term to call you guys, like like scumbags or something, but genuinely, 
thank you. I plan on continuing a series similar to this or uh, the same format. Thank you guys so much. I expect a supercut at some point soon. And uh, y'all have a great rest of your night.